Hello again, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Hello again, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Today, I am excited because I have quite a bit of stuff to show off. So I've been collecting albums over the last couple of weeks, and I found that I had been getting pairs of albums by the same musician, meaning that I got into a certain band at one point and decided I would get more than one of their albums from their discography. So for this particular vlog, I have four different bands and I have four pairs of their albums and I'm going to show them to you because that's what I do around here. So without further ado, let's get started. The first pair I have is Archers of Loaf. Years and years and years ago, a friend of mine who would go on to become my roommate showed me this band, and I believe it was uh, something off the Versus Greatest All Time, I forget what that EP is called, but it was, it was something off that. It was amazing. I thought it was super cool. I loved that it was melodic yet really heavy and angsty at the same time. So I bought Icky Metal, which came with that EP, and had been listening to it periodically. Fast forward to now, I had completely forgotten about Archers of Loaf until now, and I was like, oh my god, yeah, that band totally exists, and they're super cool. So I went to Amoeba, and uh, I got both of these albums. I believe this is their second one, and then this is their third album. I got both of them at the same time because they were dirt cheap. I believe this one was actually in the dollar section, and this one was only like $2.99, so I thought, okay, I definitely need to get these. And I'm really glad I did, because they are both really good albums. Their second album, this one here, is called Vivi. Basically, as soon as I got home and put it on my iPod, it was like the first thing I started listening to, and much like my reaction to their very first album, I fell in love with it. This is such a great album, and I'm so glad I got it. The only thing I'm sad about is it felt like it was kind of quick, and I know that there exists a remastered version, which has boatload of extra stuff, I believe, b-sides, demos, all that kind of jazz. So I'm very tempted to get it, but I think I'm gonna hold off and stick with this because I just, this is such a great album and I just wanted to experience it again. This one, their third album, um, I'm al I always blank on the name of this, uh, All the Nation's Airports. I haven't listened to it too much, but what I have heard was similar to Vivi. I need to get back into it, listen to it more, because I, this is such a great band. But um, yes, so Archers of Loaf, both these albums, they are excellent. <laughs> album pair is Widow's Peak. In my slightly country vlog, I showed off the first album, and once again, I talked about how it was great and I really liked their style, uh, so I decided to get their other two studio releases. This is the second one. This is Almanac. This one, it seems like it's, you can tell that they were going for kind of like a southern -y country approach, just like based on this cover, which, look at that, boosh, super cool. So it's equally as good as their first album. This is their third album. I believe this one just came out like last year or two years ago. This is All Yours, and I haven't listened to it yet. I'm preoccupied with quite a bit of other music. I'm glad I got it because I have really enjoyed everything that Widow's Peak has been putting out. Once I get around to this, I'm sure I'll love it, and I'm sure it's similar sounding to the previous albums, and also I'm assuming it's going to be more southern y sounding because it's the horse's mane right here, so yeah. So anyways, Widow's Peak, both their albums, oh, hold that one upside down. Widow's Peak, both their albums, love these guys, they're great. album pair is The Mountain Goats. This is a group, I don't even, I guess it, it's 
one main guy, but technically it's a band, but, well, I've been meaning to look into this group for quite some time. They've always been a band that I've heard the name of, but I just never knew where to start because there's quite a bit of releases by this guy. But I decided to go with these two, mostly because of the themes behind them. This one's called The Sunset Tree, and in this album he talks about his childhood and the abusive relationship he had with his stepfather. This guy has a really good way of telling stories in his music, not to mention that it's juxtaposed with very sweet sounding music, so you have this dark themed with very nice music. This other album here, which is called We Shall All Be Healed, this one delves into his teenage years, and I believe each track is a story about somebody he knew who either got involved with drugs or prematurely died or basically got in some sort of trouble. It's darker themes juxtaposed with sweeter music. I haven't listened to this one as much as the other album. However, I liked that other album and that turned me on to the Mountain Goats entirely. So I'm excited to listen to this one and if I like what I hear, I'll probably end up getting more of the Mountain Goats stuff in the future, but until then I'll be enjoying uh, these two. I am gonna make it through this year If it kills me I am gonna make it through this year If it kills me When I worked down to the liquor store Guy with a shotgun came raging through the place Muscled his way behind the counter I shot him in the face The final album pairing I have is Low. In the miscellaneous vlog, I talked about how I was in a huge low kick and I got their album Come On. I then had to go and get these two. This one is apparently their best album. Well, it's considered their best work. And I believe this was also the debut album where they signed on to Sub Pop. They'd been on Cranky, they'd been on some other indie label, which his name is escaping me. Low is really cool because much like them being on all these really good labels, they've had a wide variety of people producing their stuff. They've had Steve Albany produce a couple albums. They've had Steve Fisk. They had Jeff Tweedy. This one, they had uh, Dave Friedman, who produces a lot, if not all, of the Flaming Lips albums produce this one. And because this album had got such a great rep, I wanted to look into it. It's been a cover that I've always seen and just never actually gotten it. Because I'm in a low kick, I decided to pick this one up and see what the hubbub was about. The only song I know off of this is Monkey. When I first heard it, it sounded like something that the Dandy Warhols would do, which is slightly different than what Low does. Low is a lot slower, slow core, sad core, whatever you want to call it. But if the rest of the album sounds like that, that's great because that just means that Low is trying to change up things a little bit as opposed to staying in that one realm. It should be a good listen if everybody says it's great, so I'm excited to check it out. Used to be the same. Now you won't let me speak your name. What a shame. This one, trust. I don't know anything about. I mostly got this because it's on the cranky label. I'm trying to see who produced it. It's not really saying here. Doesn't say producer. Okay, well, anyways. I got this one because I believe this is the album right after Things We Lost in the Fire, which is the first low album I ever got, and I think it's my favorite so far. The main reason I got this was because it was $1.99, but as I said before, um, the other reason I got it is because it's on the Cranky label, and as I've said in past vlogs, everything that Cranky puts out is phenomenal. If you're a big fan of ambient and experimental music, Cranky is place to go look for that style of music. If this one's anything like Things We Lost in a Fire, I'm sure I'll like it, but then again, everything that I've heard by Low, I've been really enjoying, so I'm excited to listen to this one extensively, and it should be great. No, you can't take it anyway. Okay, internet, that does it for me. Let's see. Uh, I should probably get ready. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I should probably get on my bike and go to work. Uh, so, until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye.